So. And you gave me sheets, share screen. I will do that, yes. Hi everyone, welcome to our March meeting, Laurelton Pardee, off of a great, great, great virtual glow night uh, last Friday. So thank you all for joining us. I know we have some two new um, people that we just kind of got introduced, you know, briefly, but I'm Penny Myler. I'm the PTA president. We kind of have a loose agenda today. So it'll be kind of just reviewing the glow dance and then going over, you know, next event. So I'll go ahead and share my screen and just bring up um, the agenda here. So one second. So here, we'll just start, usually we start with introductions and then have Mrs. Bellow give us an update on what's going on at school. And then we'll have uh, Tiffany Lawrence, our secretary. I think we have minutes from our January meeting. We did have our bylaws vote in February. I don't think there's really much to review from a minutes perspective, Tiffany, if you agree. So um, those are bylaws um, for Julie and Natasha who don't know. Um, every PTA runs on rules um, and every three years you have to renew them or have your membership vote if there are going to be changes. So that approval happened um, last month and then we got the approval back from New York State just today. So everything is all good until 2023. And then we'll have Megan Fest give us an update on our budget, our treasurer report. And then the bottom of this agenda just has some upcoming ideas on the at a glance calendar that we had planned in the summer, still like not knowing what the whole school year was going to be like. Our next event on the at a glance calendar was a virtual game night for March 26, which I'm pretty sure is a Friday. And then in one of our past meetings, we talked about maybe a virtual um, pet show. So we can kind of go over some of those ideas and brainstorming, you know, toward, toward the end, but I'll stop sharing my screen, Mrs. Bellow. And if you want to give us an update on what's going on at LP. Okay. Thank you. So actually I was hoping that I could, um, use this time for a slightly different purpose, but if oh, anybody sure. has questions, you can certainly, um, feel free to ask questions too. So I'll open up the, the floor, um, but I was, so next Tuesday, I actually have to present to the Board of Education. And so I have this whole theme called progress through a pandemic. And what I'm doing is I'm getting all these stakeholder perspectives of what have been the strengths of LP, you know, through the year. And so seeing that we have been a very strong PTA unit, I'd love to just hear from your perspective you know, strengths um, of the PTA and then strengths of LP so that I can share that under sort of a PTA update um, for the board. So hopefully you're okay with that, um, Penny. But I thought that might be a neat just to get um, some parent perspective Absolutely. Um, into the meeting. Yeah, I'm not, I might be the only one with a full-time remote learner. Um, so I'm sure my perspective is a little bit different than what you see every day. That's okay. um, but as a parent with, you know, um, I work for an organization that's based out of California. So I have coworkers that are all over the nation, right? In all different states and who have had all different rules um, for the last year for how their kids can learn. Um, and I can tell you across the board um, that the experience that Rusty is having and what I can observe for the, the tools. Um, so there was a certain amount of preparedness for LP, which speaks to years of administration, participating in grants and equipping technology and working to build virtual competencies with um, digital tools for the kids. Um, so that foundation was really strong. Um, but the other part is that while I was unsure of it, it wasn't what I expected when the school year started. I really appreciate, and I think that my learner, my son really appreciates how um, parallel y'all worked to make the remote experience. His school day starts the same way. He has the same structure for his subject matter. I think his classroom day feels pretty much like an in-classroom day with the exception of he has an extended lunch break, right? Where, some, where the other kids are going to specials, he gets that extended break. And that works really well for him. Um, he's uh, grade-wise, his 
test scores and his participation and his feedback from his teacher have been great. Um, when I asked him um, what he would like to see different, um, he, he, he said not much. And we asked yeah. him because we saw the survey come out to say, listen, we're going to assume that you're going to be able to go back into a classroom next year and that's going to be available to all students. And he was like, will I be able to do remote some days? <laughs> um, so he really likes it. Um, and, and I think that that is a, speaks a ton to how quickly the district reacted and how realistically the remote program that you put in place um, was. It, it works, the kids are supported, it's manageable as a parent. Um, and I really appreciate that. And I, and I think Rusty does too. Thank you, Amanda. That's, yeah. that's amazing. Any other thoughts? I sprung this on you, so I'm giving you plenty of wait time. It's okay to, to take a moment. So again, thinking about the strengths of the PTA, like what are and would have been some great things we've done as a PTA group um, or LP perspective. I can say for the PTA portion, something that I have noticed every meeting we've had new people so like Natasha and Julie we're really glad that you're here Yay. and it's not that's not the typical experience actually we don't often get extra people who aren't on the board to our in-person meetings so I don't know if like for the rest of time we're planning to do virtual or maybe we're gonna do some combination of both but I would say that the participation from the parents in the meetings has been increased this year, mm -hmm. which is really nice. I mean, there have been years where we don't see another, we see people the first time and then never again. So yeah. it's been awesome because I think it's easier to just log on in your phone. Like I think Natasha was driving, right? Great. You're, you can listen, right? you can be there, but you don't have to be in person. You don't have to get dinner in the, on the table and like rush off to be at school by a certain time. So I think this has been nice that we can get more people. I'd like to see, you know, even more people, For sure. and, um, you know, and hear more feedback from other parents too, about how we can better meet their needs as families who aren't us. Um, but I think that this was, this was a nice way to get people to come to meetings and to, to know what's going on. That's not I really our fault. Like we didn't plan this. <laughs> No, <laughs> but, but even if we do up. end up, you know, doing more in-person meetings, keeping that virtual element as well and recording, I, I think, I, I think we would be silly not to keep doing that because yeah. I do want, like, I'll go and look at YouTube and people are watching these meetings. So even if they're not able to be here in person, they do go back and, and at least watch some of the, the video, which whatever, however we can get our message out there. Right. Yeah. And I just think we could, we could always use different perspectives. So yeah. it's nice to have, it's nice to have it. Yeah. That's why. And Mrs. Bello, I'm sorry. I, I'm okay. a preschool teacher who has to deal with um, in-person and remote learning at the same time. Oh, wow. So hard. It's really hard. I and don't know so, how you do it. <laughs> I am so glad that Leanna can go to school every day. Aww. And it's, we, we have to Zoom with people and figure out everything. You guys are doing an amazing job. And I don't even know, like, as a teacher, I don't know what to say about having to do both. So I'm very appreciative at everything that you guys are doing. It's awesome. Aww. Although Leah's like, mom, I don't like school anymore. Because <laughs> I have to March, nobody stuff. likes school anymore, Leanna. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to learn harder things. I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it gets better Move at the on. end of April again. It's just a little slump we're in. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. But I really do appreciate everything you guys are doing. You have done an amazing job organizing things and making sure and communicating with families about COVID cases and what's going on. And, and it's awesome. You guys are doing great. So thank you. Yes. I appreciate it. Oh, well, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for saying that. 
going along with Julie, um, so I'm a teacher aide in another district, and then we have a lot of friends in Webster. Both of those districts are on the cohort system, and I'm just hearing from um, my one friend of, they do, they feel like their kids are behind. Um, and it's for the simple fact that on their remote days, they're getting just Titch of instruction and the rest is just individual assignments. So the fact that we were able to, that the district was able to offer one, either you're a hundred percent learning at home or a hundred percent, but either way you are getting instruction those five days a week mm -hmm. and not at LP, but especially in the older grades where yeah. they are able to zoom in for all of their classes as annoying as it may be, but they are there. And if we had to, you know, and they were, I was on the PTA meeting last night and Mr. Havey was saying, we did it this way. So that way, if it came to the point of, yes, we have to go remote, you could switch in the next day, everybody would be fine. Or, you know, like we get the go ahead, it's okay. We go right back to five days a week, normal as if you, the schedule just really allows for that. And, and it's really nice. And I do, um, I just really appreciate the fact that the district was able to do that. Um, Cause I'm hearing from a lot of other districts where they're just not, they're, they're not getting it, they're not getting it done. So, and I think we are. I hear that so often, Megan, um, just how parents are really worried about um, where their kids are performing. And even, you know, my, my kids are in West Rondequoit, and so they are in person, but it's four days a week. So they get Wednesday, Wednesdays is a remote day. And it's just so interesting to see, even in the same town, how different the two school systems mm -hmm. are working. And a lot, a lot of times I'm like, gosh, I wish you were on the east side because you just would be getting a lot more seat time. And yeah. that makes a huge difference. Although I do like having Wednesday as a remote day. Oh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> a nice little break because then you just can go, I can get through two days. That's fine. And then you have a little break and then you do two more days. So that might be something to think about in the future. <laughs> in the future. <laughs> Just for all of our students. <laughs> That's funny. I was going to say the same thing, Megan. So my, the school that I'm in, I have a lot more feedback, honestly, for the, for the middle school about how amazing it is because you guys, it's just like nothing happened. Like Spencer right. goes to school and it's just like he's in school. Mm -hmm. So it's great. But the middle school, like the synchronous learning and the fact that my kid is busy all day on the on the remote days and she's learning and she's not, you know, I don't have that sense that she's behind. Like that is just amazing to me. And it's not working out the way that we're doing it. I mean, it's working out, but it like, it's, you know, it's much different to do the asynchronous on the, on the three days a week. And it's just very much different. So I agree about the district being amazing in that respect. That's great. And having dedicated teachers for remote. I don't know, Amanda, I'm sure that that leads into how successful Rusty has been, right? Like having a yeah. dedicated remote teacher. Yeah. It's not split and doing what Julie said she's doing, doing both. That sounds insane. Yes. The, no. figure, focusing on one thing is way better. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to say from a communication standpoint, piggybacking on what everybody has said, but yeah. even the talking points app in the beginning, I didn't actually download the app and I was just getting text messages as they were coming in. Um, but then I downloaded the app and I have three kids in three different schools. And I thought, how am I going to manage all of this? Um, and it was no problem at all. I think everybody's cognizant of how much information and what's the important information and when to, you know, get it out. So I'm appreciative as a parent of three sure. kids in three schools that the communication isn't just a big, you know, dump hill that I got to sift through and figure out which one I need to pay attention to right away or, you know, worry about missing everything. I think that that LP has done a great 
great job with the teachers themselves. Yeah. Then you, Mrs. Bello, and then, oh. you know, you've also advocated and shared on talking points for us as a PTA as well. So I'm hoping that, you know, that's why Julie and Natasha might be here because you sent that message out 15 minutes, you know, before the meeting. So I think mm -hmm. those are great and valid um, points as well. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome. Um, I, I don't want to mispronounce your name. Is it is it Frawani? Frawani? Whoever just. How are you? Are you at work? He's at work. <laughs> okay, Mom Extraordinaire, you're at work <laughs> and you're joining a PTA meeting. Kudos to you. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Okay, I just did. Uh, Natasha, did you want to share anything? Or are you? Um, I I don't. I'm not very expressive, but I am thankful for, um, Ms. Icus and the East Aranaquoit, um, school district as far as what they're doing for our kids. Um, I have very little concerns about my daughter. She is um, pretty up to speed with um her. Um, assignments and work yeah. and she's pretty well I just can't wait for this all to be over so can everything can be normal yeah you yeah. and me both you yeah. and me both other than yeah, that right to say. <laughs> Mrs. Thank Bell you, can you make that happen <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah finish this <laughs> thank you so much for that feedback you guys I'm gonna package that together and um, make sure I share that with the board because I, I do, I think our LP community is a pretty special place. Uh, I feel very blessed every day to be back and to be with the kids and with the families. So um, thank you to all of you for the work that you have put into making this year so successful. I mean, that glow dance was amazing. Mr. Troggett said that at, at our highest, we had 160 participants. And that's not including, that's not including multiple, right, families with multiple children. So I, I was thrilled. I was so thrilled. And of course, our paint night, our virtual paint night, and um, you guys have really tried in, in a very strange year, you've, you've tried to bring some normalcy to the kids and, and I'm so grateful. So thank you. Sorry, Leanna did not want to participate and then we went out to dinner. She's like, mom, we have to get home so I can participate. And I'm like, <laughs> you said you didn't want to participate. And then she was on for the whole time. So that it was, was so amazing. Fun. So I hope we can do more things like that. Because oh, they, yeah. they don't want to participate, but then they're happy to do it. So that was amazing to me. I loved it. Absolutely. I think, I think using Teams was was really key. Even though it's harder for us as the PTA, I think that's something we should work on so that we okay. can, the kids, the devices that are native to the kids are what we're using. It's easy for them. The links are in Schoology. It's very easy for them. And they don't, and they get to, it, it feels like theirs versus if we're doing something on a home computer or a platform that they're not as familiar with. Right. Um, and I was trying to brainstorm, like the glow dances, doing something like that takes a moderate amount of prep, right? Um, and I was wondering, like, since the kids have their devices, if there was any way for us to like do pop-up use of it or something, you know, like, you know, just say in an hour, we're gonna be on doing this or oh, pose funny. more ad hoc top topics to like use, use that talking points thing and do them at different times and things, you know, maybe do sometimes do it at 3.30 when a kid might be home by themselves or, you know what I mean? And might not have a buddy or, Maybe sometimes do one on a Sunday afternoon or something so that um, that time frame isn't isn't a challenge or you know everybody is looking for engagement in those off hours as well. I don't know. Like I was thinking if we could do something like that, it would probably be really easy for the kids. Yeah, I agree. That's why I had put it on the bottom of the agenda because it is, you know, work and you're always nervous on. Is it going to be a flop? How many people are going to join in? Is it only going to be 20? Is it only going to be, you know, so it was so exhilarating and so like great to know that everybody felt connected in that one hour of time or a little bit more that yeah. it does just kind of 
want you to do a little bit more. So I do think that those things, and if only 10 people pop on and it's something that's a pop-up where you're not really, you're just yeah. kind of more casual about it. You don't feel like all of the, the prep and the stress, you know, yeah. trying to get it. Cause I spent a lot of time doing what I, was gonna I say, did and that was you. so amateur. Like I skipped out on hours worth of work on Thursday and Friday to make sure. Cause I was so scared. It wasn't going to work that I picked all the music I pre-record, you know, like, so in those loose events where it'd be like, Oh, you know, grab whatever markers you have in a blank piece of paper and let's draw, you know, like a rainbow yeah. and some leprechaun coins in a kettle and, you know, let's have fun for an hour and talk. Those types yeah. of things are cool. Yeah. I'm sorry. So maybe we plan ahead. That's what we do in our classroom. We say, hey, we're going to do this at this time. You need X, Y, and Z. So just plan ahead. So if we plan ahead and tell parents what they need, they'll get it. Right. That's very cool. It's very TikTok, YouTube, whatever it is these kids are into these days. And yeah. you know, that it would be very similar to that. I think they would like that. That's what I was thinking too, is I'm, I mean, at the middle school, they're probably not supposed to be having their own TikTok and YouTube accounts. But mm. if the PTA could help build that same kind of feeling, that social experience for the kids, because they all want it but in a way that's more structured. Um, so we're going to all work together on X or we're all going to share what we did today or to, more to give them the opportunity to have some voice with each other. Um, Cause I do, I think the participation was enormous with um, the glow dance and it's so impressive to see. Um, the, the prep is, is definitely a huge thing. There's no doubt about that. Um, but as we get better with using teams, I think it would be great if we could like, you know, pick, you know, whether it's random or not, like do some, like a kid spotlight so they can show off their TikTok dance or, you know, whatever, like that kind of thing. If you requested the song, maybe you get, you know, 15 seconds, like with the screen on you to show your favorite moves to it or something. Yeah. I love it. Very I thought the and kid that's, kid yeah. The oh, sorry. I was just gonna say, that's kind of what we're going for with like, the pet show or the pet parade is to let kids show off something of theirs and tell about something of theirs, right? Um, just again, that, that opportunity to share or feel connected or learn something about their peers. Like I didn't know that Spencer had a lizard or whatever. Maybe we'll get him one before then, right? Yeah, or some like a fast craft <laughs> Friday. Everybody can come yeah. with a fact or something. And yeah, like, yeah. A happy hour of sorts, you know. A chunk I of thought time. they seemed like they really wanted, like at the beginning of the dance, Penny, before you started the dance, like they were so excited to see each other and their teachers. Yeah. I swear they could have done the whole hour of that, of just, just like staring at each other. Okay. Yeah, and like talking to each other. I think they could have. Yeah. It's yeah. been nonstop buzz, like when just talking to the kids, like all the Schoology posts that I'm getting, um, just even running into the kids and running into their remote rooms, they are talking nonstop about this. It, it really it, it hit, it hit a high note. It was oh, very successful. Great. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. we should definitely keep, keep going with those, those types of things. Yeah. It was really, really good. And, and I think, you know, <laughs> because it's a lot of work, I think in because parents are looking at talking points, I think we could ask for other hosts as well, right? And see if another parent wants to run that playlist instead of just us, right? Yeah. Like as long as their kid has the teams app, they should be able to share and push it up the same way that that Penny did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But would sure. they have to record it again? So like Penny, I, I was panicked beforehand. I will be the first to say like, I was like, oh my God. Um, but we didn't help at all. So Penny did all this by herself. And um, did you, so in the end, do you think you would have had, like you could have done it live like that? Or would a parent who volunteered have to record it like that? I don't, I don't think it should be recorded. I don't think you want the video presentation. I think you have to have like an iTunes playlist or a Spotify playlist that I did have maybe a Spotify like playlist, but I have three kids that I was afraid might interrupt or it's a lot of toggling back and forth and we only played but, certain. But no, that's what I'm saying is virtually, I don't think you want to share your screen. When you were sharing your screen, like 90% of the screen was just that flat. And like for the kids, 
like 10% were little tiny thumbnails of each other, like minuscule. So what I'm saying is if you don't share your screen, if you're just playing your computer audio, so you have your Spotify playlist, you can set it to pre-record and run in the background or set that, fix that list, that playlist beforehand, just the same way you did, but you don't right. record and I just it as wasn't a video. Sure about the audio, if it was going to, like, I thought about even having yeah. Spotify on my phone with my, you know, Bluetooth speaker, but that going yeah. through, and I couldn't practice. I tried to practice eight times and it wouldn't, I couldn't get on teams without, with anybody else to even practice because no one in my house has like email to get it into their school. So like, it ended yeah. up being in Schoology and perfect, yeah. but I didn't know that it was going to be that way. So yeah. But, we but can to, practice to, next time too. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah, I can get on with you guys. I would get and, like, on, on teams with you. You could tell me, get on teams and I would do that with you. Yeah. But again, we do a lot of virtual experience stuff for work. Um, and when you're playing music, we have a ton of people um, that are leading workshop sessions and do just what you said, like have their iPhone, like near their, their um, laptop yeah. speaker and, I, and just do it that I way. Practice, I didn't want it to be like, Right. You, you didn't know, want it to be you awful quality. The audio for the paint. Night. Right. I didn't want to fumble in the middle. Right. So I want, but I to think, I think to Tiffany's point, I don't think that it should be, unless we have like special videos of, you know, like the special speakers that came on and stuff. I, I think that you want to leave it not in presentation mode so the kids can see each other bigger. Um, and just the audio is what's driving the background. But I thought Mrs. Bella, was it bigger? Did everybody else have the thumbnail problem that Ann, Amanda's you, talking about or no? Only if they knew. So maybe some of the remote kids would know this. You can choose to bypass that's what the you presentation. Would you can't. Yeah, I thought you, you would can't. something that was crowding. No, none of the like kids the can. Person. You only can because you're the host. So the oh. kids, because that's it's, it's set up like that on purpose so that none of the kids, that they have to see Mrs. Lapani when she's teaching big. Is that's what the purpose of that is. Well, it's fixed. View so if, then, uh, yeah. yes. So if someone's presenting and they, they can put it in gallery view, um, but that gallery view with like multiple, like I said, 90% of the screen is just Penny's desktop. And then they have a little strip on the side where there's a grid of 30 of them, but it's tiny. tiny. Or they can have it in less view where they can see the thumbnails maybe in like a two by two inch, but that's along the bottom. And then you can only see like six or eight at a time. Amanda, do you know, because I honestly have never had a meeting with more than 30 people on teams yeah. before, can you, is there a way to see all the participants, like different pages, or you really are limited? You know? You're really limited. Um, you can only see about 30 at a time. That's all a screen will support. Because um, there was a ton of there, people I didn't see. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can scroll through the screens like you can just click to see the next screen, but it'll show you 30 at a time. Oh, see, I couldn't even scroll through this. I'll have to practice mm. at some point. Yeah, we can for sure practice next time. Um, and I'm asking that question was because Penny did all that work in recording it. And if we're going to ask people like, hey, would anyone else be interested to host? We want to know what kind of work they'd have to put into it. Because if they yeah. have to do what Penny did, they're not going to want to do it. Um, but if they Penny's could just Penny's a special kind like, of person. <laughs> right, right. Like Penny will put in that work because she is dedicated right now to this organization. But we don't want to ask for a volunteer and then be like, by the way, can you blow off six hours of work to record something? So we, is, I don't know that I understand the answer. Do they have to do that or they do not have to do that? No, you could go live. I, I just okay. wasn't sure that the, I no, didn't want I'm it to not, be muffled I don't, I don't, audio. I didn't want it to be anything. Yeah. So the only way I knew to go the best way I could, because I didn't even know if I was even going to get on. Mrs. Bello wasn't sure that because yeah. I'm not in right. the district, right. I'm a Gmail address. I wasn't even sure I was going to be able to do it. So I wanted to be able to have something. Someone could just press play and let it roll. If yeah, and, and th well. I'm still saying, I don't think that someone needs to go live either. I think that you build your playlist in Spotify or iTunes or whatever, Amazon music, whatever music app is comfortable for whoever's hosting that. And that playlist is unfixed. It's a queue. So it, you have your 15 songs and they're all there and you just hit play and it runs through them, but you're only sharing the audio. You don't have to have um, you don't have to like sit at your computer and record that whole portion of it. Like you just, all you're doing is preparing the playlist. And I think that's probably still important because I still, I feel like, you know, presenting what that playlist is, is probably helpful just to make sure that somebody doesn't slip. Um, well, it's hard also when you get a six minute, like <laughs> Hamilton song, 
Nobody's yeah. going to want to listen to Hamilton for six minutes. <laughs> yeah. so that's why I recorded it as, you know, like so I you could cut it. it so yeah. That, yeah. You know, you're going to lose great. interest. So, right. No, I think it was perfect the way that it went, Penny. I don't want yeah. you to, I don't want you to think that I'm criticizing because it worked out perfectly. I'm just trying to anticipate what yeah, to do it again would have to do if they, if we, you know what I mean? I just want to make sure that we know what we're asking people if we're going to ask for volunteers because it went perfect. Mm-hmm. And I would listen so to a good. Hamilton song. <laughs> Mrs. Bella, did you want to give an update for the school or we'll bypass that part and then just get so on I figured, to... yeah, we bypassed okay. that. Um, no, no real new updates. And um, were there any questions though? Any clarification? anything on people's minds. I do have a question. Sure. Um, I'm a little more awake than I usually am at seven o'clock. <laughs> um, is there anything happening with the science fair and do you need us for anything? Great question. Yes. So we are actually meeting tomorrow, the committee uh, after school. So I will have uh, more inf information for you after that. But yes, the goal is to have a science fair. It looks like we're not going to have it until May, though. So where, you know, as it no normally was in March, we're going to push it off to May. We're hoping for maybe nicer weather because one of the things that we're teasing is, you know, do we do something outside? Do we... Um, so we're going to kind of hash out the logistics of what that will look like. We are almost, we're like 99% sure that we're not going to be able to do a community piece, meaning parents can come into the school, but we are going to find a way to either record, like put together some video montage that we could then share um, with our families that way um, as a celebration. So more info to follow. So I know that typically you guys have purchased um, the t-shirts. So we would still like to move forward with that for our participants. Was that still on the table? Was that still in our budget? Okay. Yeah. Okay. As you um, yes, t-shirts for fifth graders as well. So maybe we do both by the same vendor and hopefully save a couple dollars. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Okay. Yeah, I like that. As y'all are planning, I, I totally get parents not participating, but if remote learners participated, could they like even drop off? You know what I mean? So they're oh, still yeah. included in whatever that display is. Absolutely. Um, and it would be amazing if the remote kids could have like a time slot or something like the remote classrooms could still go see everybody else's too. Like again, without parents, like if Mrs. Lapani walked her classroom through at a specific time, um, even For though sure. I know he's not normally on grounds, like if there could be a way to, you know, just he's masked and he's temp checked and he's in, it would be really great. I think. No, that's great feedback. Yeah. We really want to come up with something that will be manageable for remote and in-person students. Um, everyone, it, it's so interesting because there's still such a, a difference of uh, comfortability being in the building and, and coming to the building. So um, we just want to try to find a way whether, so if you're a remote family that's totally comfortable coming in and doing a presentation, awesome. Or if you're a remote family, you want to participate, but you are not coming to the building, like what would that look like too? So that's kind of our challenge. Yeah. That's our challenge. So yeah, stay tuned. Um, more, I'll have more information for uh, at our next meeting. Mrs. Bello, yeah. is the book fair this month or is that going to be when? It, is it this month? I think right. Yep. Yeah, okay. it's this month, isn't it? Next week. Yeah, I'm like, yeah I think it's right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it now or is it the eighth? I, I, uh, it's the eighth? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So, next week. Yep, so we're still doing the book fair though. Um, and we're doing it, uh, and we're, we're doing a virtual option, but we're also doing um, an in-person option. And so we've backed it up to, for remote students, they can, it's during their pickup time. So they can come in and also buy some books if they want during pickup. Um, and then each of our in-person classes will have a designated time slot and there'll be social distancing and masking and lots of sanitizing, um, but we're confident we can make that happen, so. 
that will be good because we really i think we made um two hundred dollars at our fall sale which is thousands of dollars uh, less than normal so we're hoping that maybe we can up it up, up it just just a smidge so it's virtually happening right now uh no well, i they think it's like, right yeah, yeah. Oh, the 13th okay i'm like i haven't seen anything i can't help yeah, it's the, yeah yeah i didn't see anything either but i thought i remembered mrs costello oh. saying it was in march so it's because he was remote rusty got all of his stuff last friday that's why in my mind it oh, was maybe. now okay is there a school improvement day on march 12th yes so yes. no kids are in person? No kids um, in person. Um, it is an asynchronous day, meaning teachers will assign um, online activities for the kids to do that day. So we do take attendance that day. And the way we take attendance is through um, student participation. Um, so completing assignments. So it is, count, it is a counted school day towards our um, Hume number. So then is remote pickup next Thursday then instead of Friday? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. The 11th. Any other questions? All right. I am good then, Penny. Thank you. All right. I will share screen so that Tiffany can share the minutes from list. You haven't pulled up. You're so good. I did take I did take notes from our February meeting too. Okay. Uh, I think they're on there, but they say like, do you want they do? Yeah, I can go back to it if you want, but I, oh, just, no. think I just think <laughs> I think they say like, do you like these bylaws? Yes or no? Circle one <laughs> and everyone circled the yes like, oh. on their lives. Yeah. Yeah. So what did we talk about in, in January? We talked about the bylaws, we needed to, to vote on them. We talked about the um, scholarship that we are working on for a high school senior. Um, we talked about membership sign up day, but I don't know that we did anything specific related to it that. Was on, it was on Facebook, just the, um, oh, the New York right. State sign up day, the great sign up day or something it was called. Yep, yep. Okay, so we did put that on Facebook. Um, we didn't get any grants, it was sad. We talked about, um, that if we wanted to look at those again next year, that a lot of them are around healthy habits and STEM based and inclusivity. And if we wanted to kind of gear some programs toward it next year, then we could. We have some money that we can spend on things like book fair or science fair. Um, I don't know, what else? Can you can you scroll down? I can't. Oops. Oh, we, Mrs. Bellow's report. So Mrs. Bellow updated us on all the things that were happening back then. Um, and then we talked about the glow dance and planned for that. We had some other ideas where we talked about the game night and the virtual pet show, um, which Amanda and I have been working on kind of a, behind the scenes. Um, game night scavenger hunt. We wanted to, we talked really, I remember talking mostly about just wanting to get people involved and doing things that were fun for the kids to connect with each other. And so the, the scholarship part, I think we ended up agreeing on 250 just because we weren't share, sure about you know the budgeting that we had so it typically is the 500 that gets doubled and I think we agreed 250 so that we didn't have so I don't you just put those Should in I change that today. yeah I mean I, I would just maybe put it in today's minutes not so much because we did talk about the 500 at that point I think they're okay to be approved as submitted if everybody okay. agrees and I'll just update in these minutes that we chose the 250. Yep. I think we did that after the meeting, right? We, we did. Yeah. yeah, we did. Yeah. And then Megan, I can share the treasurer um, report here and pull that up. And then if you want to go over that. Okay, so still not much going on. Um, we had two deposits from Member Hub for a total of $7.25. I don't even know. One was a $5 membership and the other one was for $2.25. I, I don't know what it is, but it's money, so we'll take it. Um, yeah, I think the, the five was from the one membership that came in on that great sign up day, the one that we got. But I don't know where yeah. the five would have come from. I, I don't know. Signing bonus? I don't know. For the one yeah. person, I don't know yeah. how that works. So. 
Um, the withdrawal for the 250 was for the uh, virtual assembly or the, was it the part of the Black History Month? Yes, it was the, the Bright yes. Star oh, Dance yeah. Troupe. Yes. Yep. Which was awesome, by the way. Thank you very much for sponsoring. Oh, good, good, good. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so that was it. So our ending balance is $4,347.46. Cash box is still 50. Savings account is still the $1,245.26. Um, Ooh, so you know what? Because I copied and pasted from when I did this in February. So I bet you my total available is not matching those other totals because I know I did not do that. So okay. that's going to have to be. Yeah, you can just read. Yeah. We can just you can just resubmit it and then we'll we'll add it. No problem. Yeah. So <laughs> hey, wait, it went away. Twelve forty five forty six. Is that right? Oh, sorry. 12526, that is correct. 26. Total yeah. available is not going to be correct because I copied and pasted and I pulled what my Applebee's managers used to do to me and <laughs> did not copy and paste all the way through. <laughs> You're like, that's not right. All right. Um, so I'll just four, three. This here was just the bottom of the agenda, which we talked a little bit about already. Um, we can certainly revisit it in the last, you know, 16 minutes that we have ahead of an eight o'clock um, adjournment time if we're staying on schedule. Um, but upcoming in May, May 5th is what we have for the um, teacher staff appreciation, how we might want to reimagine that, Mrs. Bellow, I don't know. Um, and then the fifth grade festivities, which is for Friday, June 18th, and how we might you know, reimagine those those types mm -hmm. of things. And then since we're not having a talent show this year, but we can do one of those pop-up, you know, events or a improv comedy or a fact fun fun fact night or, you know, something of that nature. So those things, you know, we could, you know, talk about or however, if anybody has new business or new ideas, um, you know, I'd open the floor for that as well um, as we, you know, conclude the meeting. If we are doing t-shirts for science fair and t-shirts for fifth graders and teacher appreciation. Are we, um, are, are, do we have the funds to do all of those without having another fundraiser? I know last time we talked, we were saying, what can we do to just make the year easier for folks instead of trying to ask for more money, but will we be able to afford all of those things or are we gonna have to look at doing that differently? Um. It was in the original budget, so we should be able to do that. So but, we have eight. But we had fundraisers. Us. We had fundraisers in the original budget as well. Mm, not as many as we really I think we did. did. Yeah. Okay. So the only other. Um, I thought that our original budget still had like a two thousand dollar deficit. Budget, budget thing, real quick. Sorry. When we did the budget in September, didn't it show us at a two, like missing $2,000 to do all the things that we had planned? I don't remember. And I'm trying to see if I can see it in the drive. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, that's 18, 19. That's not going to help me. It's probably a nicer one to look there at. There was, but we didn't, we did not, um, well, I guess we were counting on $200 from a spring fundraiser. Um, we did drop the LP scholarship down by 250. Um, thanks and smile. No box tops. So that's missing money there. But um, for what you have budgeted, even just looking at what you have budgeted so, for t-shirts and teacher appreciation, do we have enough in the budget? I think maybe, does it maybe mean that um, it's, we're not coming out even, or are we gonna have a loss? Like if we, if the funds are there, then, you know. I just looked back at what we paid last um, May for the fifth grade shirts, and that was just about $875. So that was for all of the fifth graders. So the science fair definitely has to be way more than that if you're covering all three grades for science. Science fair. Or the did we science. Talk, I thought we talked about not doing 
and again, I don't know what the feeling is on shirts. Is there something else that we can do that's not the cost of a shirt that gives them the memorabilia of the science fair? You know, like I think we tried to reimagine that as well. Maybe not mm -hmm. having shirts for that either. But again, that would have to come down checking the budget, which is what we need to do. Penny, am I dumb that I can't find it on the drive? The budget? Yeah. I don't know if, if Megan put it in there or there's like not. other years. I was trying to look. The drive, I would have no clue as to what you I don't even know what that means. Okay. I'm <laughs> appreciation lunch. Okay. Fair. I don't even know what that means. So the what we have budgeted for the science fair, the fifth grade picnic overall, and then the teacher luncheon is twenty two hundred dollars right there. Could you say that again? So you said the, the so teacher the appreciation. Yeah. yeah, so the science fair budget, the fifth grade picnic budget, all of what that would entail. And then the teacher luncheon is $2,200. Okay, for all of them together. Yes. And did we have another fundraiser that we were planning on? I feel like we didn't. I thought we were going to do a plant sale. We were thinking about like around... Mother's Day, we had tossed around that idea. How much is in, how much do we have? I know you said it was wrong, but do, is there like 5,000 ish in the, in savings? In savings, there's only the 1200 in the checking account. There's 5,600 after I just, okay. Uh, changed that. So even if we didn't have another fundraiser, cause this year is hard and different. We could still fund these things the way that we wanted to. It would just mean that um, the balance going into 2022 is might be lower, that we might have a lower carryover balance for next year's PTA than we typically would, right? Yes, correct. I, I think that in the grand scheme of things, that makes sense then, right? Um, for $200, yeah. like if we're thinking about all of the effort from the five of us that would need to go into a plant fundraiser to hope to raise $200. I think that personally for me, there's enough stuff going on. And if I'm going to spend hours doing something, I would rather spend those hours doing something else like another dance or something where it's making the kids happy versus making parents feel at least somewhat obligated. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, agreed. I agree. There are a lot of, those are a lot of work. Yeah. You and might you're try to one. set up like a dining, like a dining, a dining night. We were talking about maybe with the family game night, like maybe doing like a grab Chipotle or grab one of the Italian spots that would do a portion of proceeds. But do we need to? I don't know. I, I haven't looked into any of the restaurant. Um, that sponsorship sponsorship isn't right, but. I know the high school is having another Chipotle night um, next week or the week after. Um, our first one wasn't well attended, but it did for it not being well attended. We did get $130. Um, Panera night was not, again, not well attended and we still got $90. That's so, so low. I see people on that Facebook page making like three grand from them. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and then so with, with spruce, you know, whatever, there'll be more competition for to be having right. fundraisers of sorts as well. I don't know. Yeah. I kind of feel like sports are starting to open back up as well. Like as a parent, we're starting to get those calls too. And if we have the funds to make it work for the PTA this year, my vote would be to let it ride and try to focus more on events versus fundraising for the remainder of this year. And knowing that if our kids want to try to do spring sports, soccer and baseball and lacrosse and stuff, that that's going to be a heavier lift for every single parent this year because um, they didn't get any funds last year, right? Like all of those um, community leagues are probably mm -hmm. operating at a far bigger deficit than we are. Yep. Just next year's, next year's board is going to have to be prepared to not be able to afford stuff at the beginning. Which is where we were. And then we it is, ended right. up pushing the wheels right. and, you know, we're happy with the pie sale that brought in, you know, money that we didn't think we were going to have, which was nice, but still, 
Yep. The money burns faster than you can make it. So well, you want to give everybody everything that they want. It's hard. Yeah. I do think, I mean, I think we can afford t-shirts. I also think it might be cute to do like, I don't know, like a science speaker or something else that's sciencey. Um, but I don't know if that like is going to, um, make kids sad. I, I, I'm not going to pretend to be the norm. Like I've seen Rusty wear a science fair t-shirt once and well, it's I was because just I, say, refuse, I don't know. It's because either. I refuse to tell him to do his laundry. And so it's been like <laughs> three weeks and it's what's left. And he's just being stubborn. He's like, I'm not going to do it. She'll do it eventually when I don't have any clothes left to wear. And I'm like, listen to me. But you're not going to school. So <laughs> you can wear underwear all day long. <laughs> now he slept wear shirts. <laughs> Those are my rules. <laughs> like, certainly going naked out because you things. refuse to do your laundry yeah. isn't, isn't, isn't a viable option for me. <laughs> Did that go in the minutes, Amanda? Or no? <laughs> yeah, sure. Please, <laughs> please. <laughs> I think it'd be fun to do something else if we could come up with something that wasn't a tchotchke that people would want to throw away. You know, like I don't, you can get, sometimes you can get really good deals on those plastic water bottles, right? I think that the one thing, um, there's just such uh, history with science fair and- They the get to make the t-shirt, right? Right, the fit, one of the, the, the pride of fifth grade is that you get a part in, in trying to design the, the science fair shirt. So I think as long as we can maybe do something where kids could still submit a design and that d design would be transposed onto something. Um, I think that that would be okay. Sure. It's like waiting until the 11th hour, hoping the schools were gonna like open up again. So it ended up being like push come to shove. And, you know, we went with um, one of the Ivan Green teachers family has a shirt shop in Geneseo. So that's who we went with. So that was at like 650 a shirt. So we can see. Oh, we can do way better than that. Yeah. I yeah, have you, part of it. Is it, yeah. Yeah. is it closer to like 300 shirts with all the adult sponsors and stuff? Is that like reasonable? Well, this is, I know all yeah. the kids don't participate, but then some of the teachers have shirts too, so right? We have the 315 students enrolled. <laughs> I, you know, you usually get, I mean, we have high percentage. I mean, I, I remember that there's uh, like 90% often participate. So even if you did like two thirds, but it's, it really is hard to know what people are going to do this year. It's really norm. I don't like last minute planning. I don't like that, but this, we have not been really able to get a, our footing here for a lot of, but stuff. to get quotes, yeah. if we, Freeze our probably gonna make our that's what I was down. saying. If we pick the same better to do both, then the right. cost for shirts, you know, go go down. Yeah. yeah. I I and give them one, but I, I think that they probably really only give us a volume just kind of for feel like the I don't know. It's we could do them all at once just <laughs> different shirts. Sure. Wait, so did you say this is going to be in May though? Yeah. And if in June, when is the, the, yeah, I mean, it's I don't close. think it's, they could, fifth grade could do their fifth grade shirts, you know, now and vote on a thing. It doesn't mean, you know, yeah, so I think it's probably reasonable. The, yeah. yeah to probably them at the same time. Yeah. If we got them both printed like mid May and then held this, the fifth grade shirts for a couple weeks. That makes sense. So Mrs. Me. Bello, did you say for the science fair shirts that the fifth graders get to draw the design and then it's the fifth graders also that draw the design for their own fifth grade shirts? Yes. And do the science fair, they vote on them like they do for the fifth grade? So yes. we could we could run both of them at the same time, yeah. get everybody drawing <laughs> and then pick their winners, you know, by, yeah, you know, early June or something or end of April, that's still six weeks from now, end of April. Yep. So who coordinates that um, submission? Um, is, it, is, it, is it the art teacher who says, yeah. you know, now is the time? So can yeah. you- So we would, so tomorrow we'll set up that whole timeline 
of okay. events. And so, but we can maybe expedite some of the, the design drawing process before even getting into, I think my thing is, is I'm breaking up, aren't I? No, you no, see, I'm oh, okay. it says I have unstable internet. So I just didn't know. Um, but yeah, we could probably expedite the design process so that we can get things, you know, in and ordered. And then the fifth grade t-shirts, that would be I don't know. the I don't know team how level, that works, right? You guys. Yeah. Usually it's the fifth grade teachers kind of spearhead together. And then okay. I have the emails from, I think it was Mrs. Martello. Okay. Is who did it last, last year. So I can forward you, Mrs. Bello, like okay. whatever that communication was, and maybe the fifth grade teachers, they start talking and then. Yeah, because I can it. talk to Mrs. Antonelli. To win. Yeah, Mrs. Antonelli is a grade level leader. So I can just touch base with her and say, what's going on with this? And oh, maybe it was know. Mrs. Antonelli. Maybe I'm, I'm saying, yeah, it was Mrs. Antonelli. Martello yeah. Antonelli. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Are um, they in the same school? Are they both in your school? Maybe I'm grabbing yeah. one from Melendale. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was thinking maybe they're both fifth grade. They're both fifth grade. Both fifth okay. grade. So okay. you're good. Okay. <laughs> it might have been Diane, Mrs. Martello. I'll so pull I'll back to my emails. Okay. So fifth graders vote on the fifth grade design. Fifth graders draw the science fair designs, but I, I think all the grade levels can vote on that, right? I think. Uh, I thought it was just fifth grade. Okay, so both of them are just fifth wrong. grade. It's fifth it grade pride. Okay. But I, if memory serves me, it's been three years though. So but I thought <laughs> it was fifth grade, but I could be wrong. So we will work all the, it really is our meeting is tomorrow. So I'll have a lot more answers. I just have a lot of questions now. Sorry. <laughs> Amanda and Tiffany, do you guys have a date for the pet show or whatever you guys are brainstorming? Oh, do you want me to show you my um <laughs> my little flyer <laughs> design? Flyer. We were talking about the date, but we didn't come to anything because we were wondering about the science fair actually. So okay. um, if we wanted to aim for a Friday night again, then um, we were looking at the 20. Well, if, if Friday, if the 12th is, or like, like a, an asynchronous day. And the 26th is the last day before spring break. And the 19th yep. year out, I think that's our Fridays. I think we got to look at like a during the week kind of thing. Hmm. Um, Which that's really cute. Like no, oh my God. no spring sports have started up yet, right? Like, so baseball started for did it? travel. Okay. But that's and only one night a week. So Sunday nights are out for me. Okay. And Megan, you you have swimmers, right? Or just older swimmer? Uh, she was just an older swimmer. Okay. So then if we're looking at the next couple of weeks, the Monday through Thursday, are there school events that are happening? So let me pull up my calendar. Yeah, I looked I at the digital remember. calendar and I was like, I don't know that this is true. <laughs> like it says the book fair is this week and stuff. So I was like, I think some of it's wrong. <laughs> All righty. The book Very fair easy. is indeed the eighth, you guys, for that okay. whole week. Okay, so what um, what days did you, you want? Just March in general? What are things happening? Yeah, like during the week. I'm looking. Um, So far, the week of the 15th is looking good. And then let's see, the week of the 22nd. Well, if we're going to try to do family game night on the 26th, let's try to do this the week of the 15th. Does that make sense? I mean, you could do it in place of the game night. Nobody really knows. Yeah, we haven't nobody, advertised nobody, that, right? Yeah, no, nobody knows. Nobody has started planning for it, so we're not going to like undo anybody's work. Yeah, no. Okay. Yeah, we've got nothing on the 26th. 
And that's the day before spring break. Okay. All right, we we could try to do that. Um, yeah, and then my only other thought is like, if we have like a massive snow day or something, like what if we could coordinate real quick to do like the pet parade on that day or a family game, you know, a kid's game um, on that day, if everybody is suddenly home and didn't have a plan because it snowed, I don't know. Okay, so do we want to try for the 26th, then? 26th then? That would work with, that That works for LP. Yeah, go okay. ahead. Okay. That'd be cool. And then as you follow up for talking points, like I think it would be nice if you shared with parents, I, I think probably a lot of them could see the volume, but maybe put out that call for volunteers this week to say it was a big success. The kids would love to do it again. If you're a parent and want to help coordinate the next one, reach out or email the PTA or something. Are you talking to me, Amanda? Yeah. yeah. Could you put okay. that in talking points or something or to share, or should we just post it on like the PTA Facebook page to say it was I a success? I think as many places as you can post and can, you should. That's been, because I, when you look at the analytics of all of our different communications, it's all over the place. So, um, yeah. I, I think if we, I think if we are doing virtual components next year, we should talk about adding like a, uh, a social media chair or board position, somebody yeah. to like own and manage PTA, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram so that they're catching all the parents that use those platforms. Does that make sense? That's kind of where the, um, so the old corresponding secretary position that we got rid of, that's what they, that's what they would have done if social media had been going on for the past 50 years. So that would be like kind of where it is. But if you don't call it the corresponding secretary and you call it like the Facebook chair, and then that way they don't have to be an actual member, then you probably would have a better outcome of getting someone to do it. Got and it. If not so the part, today. So, yeah. That it's was what? awesome. That was the only reason I knew. <laughs> I posted the meeting on Facebook last night. I was like, ooh, secretary, you actually know when the meeting is. Post it on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> the first one I remembered all year. But if 160 kids joined, you know, I think post like half the school joined. Yeah. Right? Amazing. Yeah. Any other business? Any other things? We're now 8.05, so keeping everybody's time in, in line. It's almost my bedtime for real. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure all yeah. of us. Yes. Yeah. I don't have anything else. Those were just the things that, you know, I think the pop-up nights are a great idea. So if we can get some extra help. I mean, that's the part where we always struggle with. It's not any, any different than any other year. So, but. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. If there's nothing else, then we can adjourn at 805. Thanks ladies. Thank Thanks, you. Everyone. Penny. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.